Okay, so these guys have pulled back out to the coast. Maybe they were evading a missile. Maybe they were reacting to the aircraft getting airborne. But that's a missile launch. That'll be an SA-2 launch on my seat flight. Maybe they were just, no kidding, weaseling the SA-2 and trying to... Trying to draw some attention from it. That'd be cool if that were the case. Now, this engagement is going to be interesting once we get to the resolution on this. So they're down to just Sidewinder, so it's just a, a big gaggle that we're going to have right here. If you're going to have a big air-to-air -air engagement, it would be... I couldn't think of a better place for it to happen is right here in the middle of the map. So let me just zoom in real quick and we'll... Try to keep as much as possible everything that's going on in view. Okay, so that's a missile launch. AIM-7 heading in on... The fighter, haven't got a definitive classification on him just yet. Okay, that was a good hit on something. And that's a missile launch coming in from directly behind me. Okay, so that's a missile launch. AA-2, it has to be. Alamo off of a off an F-7. Okay, they're turning to re-engage up there. And another missile launch detected, probably another Alamo right there in that air-to-air air -air engagement we have going. Now, I'm starting to worry about my ECM aircraft now. They're up at 36,000 feet. I've got a fighter coming down. They're at 10,000, so it's possible they haven't even seen the jammer yet. Let me declare this guy hostile. And you, let me go ahead and have you come up north to turn away from that threat. I'll have you continue to jam, however, as I have another missile launch. And now, hopefully, I've got my seed aircraft about to go in there and engage that SA-2 as I've got my two strike flights coming in about to hit the coast. Another missile in the air, and this is going to be an AIM-9F Sidewinder off of one of my guys. That's a missile launch that'll be an AA-2 heading in against this F-104. And we've lost our first fighter. Okay, that was one of these F-104s. Just got taken out by an F-6. This is the MiG-19 equivalent. Chinese export of the J-6. And we lost another one. Boy, that's that's rough. But, I mean, that's what, you, that's what you get when you have to get in close against this style of fighter in an F-104. Okay, so I'm starting to really worry about uh, this package up here to the north now. Okay, they're still getting jamming. There's still only two enemy aircraft. I'm going to let this play out in either case, in both cases. Although, just aborting the mission altogether, north and south, is an option. But I've got nothing to lose just by letting it play out. I mean, that's what I'm going to do. As we now have a three on three engagement. These guys are down to sidewinders. So it's just basically F-104 versus F-7s, F-6s, two F-6s and an F-7. As this seat aircraft up here is about to get taken out by this F-6. Not much I can do about that. Hopefully the jammers are going to help this situation out. Although this one's about to get jumped by another fighter. And I'm going to have you pull back. As these guys are just in a straight tail chase at this point. I'm just tweaking the, the fly path of this. Four ship of F-104 is going in against Barat. Did I not have... Did everything get airborne? No, it did not. No, my, my Genas did not get airborne. Okay, it's a little late now. I'll just, I'll just write that off to a maintenance abort for my four Genas. I think it had to do with the... Fuel load. Although I might, I might have just made a mistake there. Maybe I, maybe I assigned them to the wrong strike. It doesn't matter. I'm not, I'm not worried about it. 
But then again, why did these genas make it all the way up here, but these genas didn't get airborne, I assume just due to due to fuel load. But that's fine, that's fine. Okay, now my seed flight up north is still getting jumped by this farmer, and I believe they have finally decided to go in there and engage that SA-2. It's possible they don't even... Well, they, they must know they have a fighter on their tail. Yeah, they're turning to evade it right now. I've got another another bogey up. I'll go ahead and declare it hostile. And it looks like these strike aircraft are going to get jumped, but I'll, I'll still let it play out. At this point, I think I am far enough committed that even if I did pull these guys back and have them RTB, I think if I were going to lose an aircraft, I would still lose an aircraft at this point. And there's a missile launch. That'll be a... Yeah, this is going to be the first of these seed aircraft. The Gene is getting taken out right here. Let me go ahead and just have these guys... Let's have them RTB and just pull them out of there. Let me go ahead and get them up to full power if they weren't there already. Yeah, there's a light attack number six. That was one of the Genas taken out. Because there are just too... Yeah, there are just too many fighters up there and it's going to not allow them to get in there and take out that SA-2 in either case. So... They've got to be getting low on fuel when it comes to getting back safely anyway. So yeah, best thing I can do is just pull them out and let them draw these F6s out and away from these strike aircraft. That's the best thing I can have them doing right now. And North Jammer 1 and 2, let me go ahead and have you. You're still close enough that you're going to be able to provide some jamming support. But I just can't risk having these aircraft get too close to the fighter threat at this point. It might actually be no, they'll yeah, they'll they'll still be able to run. These guys. The F6s and F7s don't have an infinite amount of fuel, and there's my F104 down here in this air-to-air -air engagement getting taken out. And now we're down to two aircraft with Sidewinder, so they still should be able to do okay. It's now a three on two. They just gotta get some lucky rolls and see if they can just get into a position, a good position, to take these AIM-9 shots. Now looking down south real quick, I want a little less separation. Let me have these guys reduce their speed down to loiter. Let me have these guys increase their speed to full. I wanted a little bit less separation between the seed and the strike and the jammers. So I'll wait just a little bit to get these jammers active to support the seed and the strike. But yeah, I want to I want to close the gap a little bit between the poor ship of F-104s and the poor ship of uh, of seed F-104s. Okay, so that's a farmer and a fish bed down, so these guys are starting to turn the tables. Well, and just as I say that, now it's just a one-on-one -on -one battle right here in the middle, so that's... <laughs> boy, this is... Uh, it's turning out to be a costly strike when it comes to the F-104 fighter aircraft. Now, we have our strike going up into Jader. They've turned north into the target area. Now I've got my seed still coming in directly down here, and I've got this strike about to go feet dry and make their run so things are starting to progress I just it would be almost perfect if it weren't for the fighters coming up from up north and I feel better about the call that I made to engage all eight of my fighter F-104 aircraft up here I mean that's absolutely all that I have to play with when it comes to air to air and I committed them at the right place at the right time if I had had them if I had for example, had four of them covering the north package and four covering the south package. The four up north would have just gotten overwhelmed while the four down south would have had relatively little to do. So by having all eight up here where the main fighter threat was, I used them the best that I could. It just wasn't enough. Okay, 
And this group is starting to come around. They're just turning with that, with that remaining F6. And once they turn and get a, and get a sidewinder shot, rear aspect shot, they'll be able to take it out. They had one sidewinder remaining, and that'll be that. Now I can turn these guys back around, although it's a little bit, a uh, little bit too late if they were. Yeah, they're just going to be right here. They're doing all the good that they can at this point in either case. Okay, so I've got my runway strike running in right now. I've got my runway intersection strike, the two ship turning to engage. Now let me focus up here on the north just briefly. And we will watch this play out and then we'll transition back to the south. So there we go, weapons away. Those are some Mark 83s going in on the runway. Looks like we got some good hits. We picked up a couple of contacts. Let me see, Mobile 113 and 114. Possible, probable AAA up there at the base. That is what was brief, was to expect uh, some light AAA as well. Now I've got these guys going in against a runway intersection. Okay, weapons away on it. And there we go, those runway access points are damaged and craters. I still got this little air battle going down here with this F-104, trying desperately to turn with an F with an F-6. Not gonna happen, but he can keep trying. Now I've got this F-6, hopefully, as I've got, yeah, you can see some AAA coming up from the from the base, some uh Triple A, a little bit too little too late because these guys are already out of the area and over the hill 200 feet. So, yeah, they broke a line of sight for sure. I just hope this F7 is RTB out of fuel or something and he doesn't turn to engage my F104 is getting out of the area. Okay, so that's that for the Jader runway strike. So that that actually went very well. Not counting the air to air picture right there. I couldn't have asked for a better Resolution up there. The SA-2 never engaged, probably because of the jamming that I had going on up there. I'll leave these jammers on station until I get these two groups completely out of the SA-2 envelope, even though they are broken from line of sight by being at low level. And line of sight is broken by these two hills we were looking at in the first video. And that's going to leave the seed going in against... Berat Kukova, so let me, I'm just going to assume that everything is going to just continue as a big turning circle fight right there in the middle, and I'm going to focus right down here for now. Okay, so I've got these guys still masked by terrain. I can, however, go active on my jammers. It'd be a good time to do that, so offensive ECM and comms jamming active on both aircraft. So I didn't get these guys on station. I, I would have preferred to have them right here on station right now. That's fine, though. They can still do a good job from standoff. The closer, the better. But at least I have them there. Now my strike aircraft is going to continue out here over the terrain and then run in up the valley. And this guy is going to be masked. He's going to pop up and take out the SA-2. Let me take it out of manual control for both of these packages. And just let them do their thing. And there you can see examples of the Mark 83. Just your standard general purpose bomb. This is a, a Navy style bomb body. You can see kind of the, like the rough coating it has on there. It's sort of a heat protective coating. Just so that it will prevent and delay cook off in case of a fire on a carrier deck. Uh, Google search the uh, USS Forrestal explosion or USS Forrestal bomb and you'll see a good example of why that's important especially for the Navy. You see the AIM-9s in the background there, all live munitions with the yellow bands for the live warheads and you see the brown bands that means it has a, a live rocket motor on these AIM-9s. And a pretty recent, pretty recent photo, you can tell just by looking at the color of the fin assembly, you know, if you see a fin assembly like this with the band on it instead of the old school olive, you can tell it's, uh, you know, pretty much late 90s 
or newer bomb or at least the fin assembly the bomb body who knows how old those things are okay so that was a good run so mark 83s just went on went in on the sa2 and took it out so that's a good seed strike and i've got my runway strike following up on plot of course and they're just going to come down here as planned and cut back up to the north And it looks like we had some AAA pop up right there, uh, Mobile 115, just like we did on the other airfield. Hopefully these guys are going to get out of the area, however. And let me let me go ahead and do that. Let me just have them RTB. I don't need them hanging out there over the airfield. All I wanted them to do was take out the SA-2 and go home. I don't need them to get hit by any kind of AAA there. And now we'll just follow the runway strike in as they go in and take out their target. <laughs> 